Welcome. Welcome to the new session of the Laplace transform. And in this session, we shall be discussing about the inverse Laplace transform. So inverse Laplace transform is basically a method in which we shall be solving the differential equations and we shall use this inverse Laplace transform to find the solutions of the differential equation, the solutions of the linear differential linear equations where it will be involving two terms of x and y variables and we shall be evaluating the values of the or the solutions of the equations and we in the previous uh, we have already discussed that how we shall evaluate the integrals using the Laplace transforms. So interestingly, inverse Laplace transforms are basically used to solve the differential equation and helps in finding the solution of the differential equations. And it finds the value of the solution of the differential equation without finding the value of the particular integrals, without using the arbitrary constants. And it gives us the answer. So this Laplace transform is very much effective in calculating the solutions of the or the roots of the differential equations. So let us now first of all discuss some of the important formulas that shall be coming in the inverse Laplace transforms. And these important formulas are just what we have uh, originally derived the relations for the Laplace transforms. So the first formula is that Laplace inverse one by S is equal to one. So we know that the Laplace of one is one by S, that is, if we take this Laplace to this side, so what will be there? That will be Laplace of one. So Laplace of one is one by S. So Laplace of one is one by S. So when we are taking the Laplace to the other side, that is to the answer, when we take the Laplace, that becomes the Laplace inverse and the question becomes the answer. So we have Laplace inverse of one by S is equal to one. Similarly, we know that Laplace of t raised to power n minus 1 is n minus 1 factorial upon s raised to power n. So now we have taken the Laplace to the other side. So we get the formula that Laplace inverse of 1 by s raised to power n will be t raised to power n minus 1 upon n minus 1 factorial. Similarly, we know that Laplace of e to power a t is 1 by s minus a. So therefore, Laplace inverse of 1 upon s minus a will be e to the power a t. Now, we know that Laplace inverse of s upon s square minus a square is hyperbolic cosh of a t. So if we have the Laplace inverse of a upon s square minus a square, so it would be shine of a t. Since there is not a, there is a value of one here. So this a goes to the right hand side and becomes one by a hyperbolic sine a t. So you have to take into the value, the constant values. If the numerator is having the a value, then it is all right. If it is not having an a value, then the answer has to be divided by the a value. Similarly, for the trigonometric cos term, we have Laplace inverse of s upon s squared plus a squared is equal to cos a, a t. And again, the same for the trigonometric sine function. If it is a upon s squared plus a squared, the answer will be sine a t. And if it is 1 upon s squared plus a squared, the Laplace inverse answer will be 1 by a sine a t. Now, we know that the Laplace inverse of f of s minus a is e to power a t f of t because we had applied the first shifting theorem. We know that Laplace of e to power a t was f of s minus a. So we have taken the Laplace to the other side. So we have that Laplace inverse of f of s minus a is e to power a t f of t. So if we apply the first shifting theorem to all the sine terms and the hyperbolic sine and cos terms, so we have that the formula that Laplace inverse of s minus a upon s minus a ka whole square minus b square. So we can see that we have shifted our formula and for the shifting, it is shifted by s minus of a. So we have the term e to power a t and whatever is subtracted or added with the s terms, so that is the argument of the trigonometric cos and the hyperbolic cos functions or the sine functions. So we have e to the power a t 
cause hyperbolic cause of bt similarly again you can see that the shifting theorem has been applied so and there is no uh, a or b in the numerator also so we can say that it is 1 by b e to power at hyperbolic sine bt similarly we can see this for the trigonometry functions we have s minus a upon s minus a ka whole square plus b square so we are applying the laplace inverse we get the formula of e to power at cos of bt similarly for the sign we have laplace inverse of 1 upon s minus a ka whole square plus b square so answer will be 1 by b e to power at sin of bt so we know that the laplace inverse of f of s by s is nothing but the integral function so it is 0 to t f of t dt because here just we have just converted the formula we have that the laplace of 0 to t f t dt was f of s by s so we have taken just the laplace to the other side so in this way you can create as many inverse formulas you want similarly laplace of 1 will be just a function of s uh, will be s which will be a function of t and we have certain uh, results also you can prove these results also you can find the values and you can remember or you can also memorize these results where the denominators are having the whole squares so Laplace inverse of s upon s square plus a square ka whole square is 1 by 2a into t sine of at. And if there is that in the numerator you have s square minus a square upon s square plus a square ka whole square, then the sine is replaced by cos and we have t cos of at. So you can see that if it is s term, it is 1 by a, 2a into t sine at. And if it is s square minus a square, then it is t cos of at. Similarly, if we have Laplace inverse of 1 upon s square plus a square ka whole square, there is no s function in the numerator. So the answer will be 1 upon 2a cube into sine at minus at cos of at. And if it is s square divided by s square plus a square ka whole square, then it is 1 by 2a sine at plus at cos at. You can see there is so much correlation between the results. The only difference is that here it is negative, here it is positive, and here the constant term is involving 1 by 2a cube, and here it is 1 by 2a. So, a uh, lot of similarities are there in the answers, and if you don't want to memorize it, you can solve. There would be certain ways of calculating these results, and we shall be learning these in the subsequent modules. So let us now e evaluate one of the problems involving the inverse Laplace transform. So we have Laplace inverse of 3s minus 8 upon 4s square plus 25. So whenever you find a problem of the inverse Laplace transform, the first thing you will have to do is always try to convert the denominator term in the whole squares such that the, if you have converted in the uh, denominator into whole squares and it is consisting of two terms then try to visualize it and compare it with the hyperbolic cos or the hyperbolic uh, sine or the trigonometry sine cos functions in this way you will be able to solve the inverse laplace transform in very easy manner so what we do, we split our 3s minus 8 into two terms. So we have written this as 3s upon 4s square plus 25. And this is 8 upon 4s square plus 25. Now, if we remember the trigonometry sine and cos terms, so what we find that in the denominator, we have s square plus a square or s square minus a square. So s square is not having any coefficient with it. It is, it is independent of any coefficient. It is having a coefficient of one. So what we do is if there is any coefficient multiplied with s square, we take the coefficient out or we take it as a common number. So we have taken this four common. So the equation becomes s square plus 25 by four. You can see this that we have taken the four common in both the terms. So now you can make it a whole square. So it becomes 3 by 4 Laplace inverse s upon s square plus 5 by 2 ka whole square. Because it was 25 by 4, we can write it as 5 by 2 ka whole square. And now you can see this, that this term becomes s upon s square plus 5 by 2 ka whole square, which is nothing but the trigonometry cos function. So we can write it as 3 by 4 cos 5 by 2t. 
and for this term since there was no s involved there was a constant so either you divide it by a term a term was 5 by 2 or you can simply in the numerator you can multiply and divide it by the a term so it is 5 by 2 divided by 5 by 2 i have kept the 5 by 2 numerator term in inside the bracket of the laplace inverse and taken the denominator that is 5 by 2 outside the bracket and i have solved it and i what i get is the result in that it is 2 into 2 divided by 5 by 2 which is 4 by 5 and this corresponds to the sine function so it becomes sine of 5 by 2 t so i get my resultant answer as 3 by 4 cos 5 by 2 t minus 4 by 5 sine of 5 by 2 t so basically in the inverse laplace transform what you get that initially when you were solving for the Laplace transform, you were given a FT function. This was the function and you applied the Laplace and you got the result in the S function that was F of S. Now you are given an F of S and then you, here you will be applying the Laplace trans, inverse Laplace transform and you shall be finding the function itself. So inverse is basically the reciprocal of the Laplace transform. So in that, uh, when we apply Laplace on f of t, we get the answer as f of s, but inverse, Laplace inverse is applied on f of s and you get the answer as f of t. So we have to basically calculate the function itself. So this is the beauty of the inverse Laplace transform that we can find the function using the inverse Laplace transform. So now let us see some methods how to calculate the inverse Laplace transforms. So we have already discussed in the Laplace transform, we had a formula for calculating the uh, derivative of the function. So Laplace of the derivative of the function was S of Fs minus of F of zero. So now basically this Laplace is taken to the right hand side. When we take this Laplace to the right hand side, what happens? that we get an answer or we get a result for the inverse Laplace transform. So Laplace inverse of f of s will be nothing but f dash t, where f dash t is written as d by dt of f of t. And here also the Laplace inverse is applied on the function f of zero. So that results into the function that is f zero delta t because f zero is a constant value. It is a value of the function at t equal to zero. So we have, that it will be f0 into delta t and delta t takes the value of 1. So by using the result of this Laplace inverse that is s of fs we shall evaluate one of the one or two problems related to such s multiplication by s. So let's see this problem. So let us see a problem related of the inverse Laplace transform where the f of s is multiplied by s and the formula is d by dt of ft plus f0 delta t. So we have the for a question that is we have to find the Laplace inverse of s upon s plus 5. So you can see that this is s, we can say that this function s upon s plus 5 can be written as s multiplied by 1 upon s plus 5. So what will be f of s? This 1 upon s plus 5 will be f of s. So if 1 upon s plus 5 is f of s, means f of s can be written as Laplace of f of t. So if we want to find the f of t, this Laplace will be taken to the other side and we have to apply the Laplace inverse of s plus 5. So Laplace inverse of 1 upon s plus 5 is nothing but that is 1 upon s minus a and which is e to power minus 5t because it is the formula for e to power a t. So we know that the Laplace inverse of s plus 5 is e to power minus 5t. So we can say our function is e to power minus 5t. We have evaluated our function that is e to power minus 5t. Now we have to evaluate the Laplace inverse that is Laplace of s into f of s. So when we want to evaluate the Laplace inverse of s times fs, we have to apply this formula that we have already derived. So it is d by dt of f of t plus f0 delta t. Now we can substitute the values for f of t. We shall substitute that the value is e to the power minus 5t. And f0 means that the value of the function at t equal to 0 into delta t, where delta t takes the value of 1. So 
we have e to the power minus 5t and when we shall substitute t equal to 0. So when we substitute t equal to 0, we get exponential to the power 0 and we know anything raised to power 0 is 1. So we get the value of f of 0 as 1. And upon differentiating of e to the power minus 5t, we get the answer as minus 5 times e to the power minus 5t. So in this way, we are able to calculate the value of the Laplace inverse of s upon s plus 5. So this could be solved with another method also. You could have multi, you could have added 5 here also. You can have added and subtracted 5. So what you would have got, you could have split up into two terms and you could have got 1 minus of 5 upon s plus 5. You can see this term also and you could have applied the Laplace inverse on these two terms also. So you could have calculated for Laplace, Laplace inverse of 1 and you could have also applied the Laplace inverse upon 5 upon s plus 5. So when you had applied the Laplace inverse of 5 upon s plus 5, you would have got the same result that is minus 5 e to the power minus 5t. And you would have solved it for Laplace inverse of 1 also. So in this way, there are many methods to solve the Laplace inverse. You will have to judge that you want to apply which of the following methods. So let's see another problem related to the multiplication by S. So we have the question that is Laplace inverse of S square upon S square plus A square. So this can be solved as we can suppose that this equation can be rewritten as S times S upon S square plus A square. So this is f of s will be now what? If we compare it with s times fs, the fs will be s upon s square plus a square. And if this is our f of s, we can evaluate our function. So you can see that this s upon s square plus a square is the cos function. So the Laplace inverse of s upon s square plus a square is cos of a t. So now we can apply again the formula. So f of t is cos of a t, we have to derivative and put the value here. And for f of 0, we have to substitute the value of cos of a t at t equal to 0. So we get this, that d by dt of cos a t plus cos a t at t equal to 0 into delta t. Now cos a t value is 1 and delta t is 1. So we can say that cos a t derivative is minus a sin a t and cos a t delta t will be at t equal to 0 equal to 1. So we get this following result. This could also be solved in the same way that you could have added, added and subtracted a square. You could have added and subtracted a square also, and you could have split up into two terms. So you would have got at one minus of a square upon a square plus a square. and then you would have applied the Laplace inverse on these two terms. So in this way, you can calculate this Laplace inverse in this method also. So I have already discussed that you, it is your wish what formula you want to apply. Let us now discuss another method of evaluating the Laplace inverse. And here we shall be discussing the evaluation of Laplace inverse where f of s is divided by s. Previously, we discussed the problems where f of s was multiplied by s. So it is Laplace inverse f of s by s. And we know that Laplace of 0 to t integral ft dt was f of s by s. And we have taken this Laplace to this side. So we get the resultant answer as integral 0 to t ft dt. So the same is this result that it is 0 to t ft dt. For f of t, we can write as Laplace inverse of f of s dt. So you can see what happens that if this Laplace, if you want to evaluate the Laplace inverse of f of s by s, this s is simply removed in the expression and what you get is the integral. So you have to just evaluate the integral 0 to t. Remember the limits, here the limits are from 0 to t and it is Laplace inverse of f of s dt. So now let us discuss the problem related to this part where we have the Laplace inverse of f of s by s. So we have the question that it is Laplace inverse of s square plus 2 upon s by s into s square plus 4. So we can see here that we have the term of f of s by s. So this term will be our 
f of s. So when we have a question of f of s by s, we have to first see what is our f of s. So this is our f of s. Now I have uh, recalculated or uh, taken this that in the numerator I have also having s square plus two. So I have added two and subtracted two so that I get the result as s square plus four minus two. And now I can split this term into two parts. So I can write it as s square plus four by four and two upon s square plus four. So I have split my value into two parts and now I shall be applying the Laplace on the two parts. So you can see this s square plus four and s square plus four gets canceled and you are left out with only Laplace inverse of one by s. So here it is Laplace inverse of one by s. And in the second part, you have Laplace inverse one by s into two upon s square plus four. So now my f of s will be this two upon s square plus four. So when I, I want to apply the formula of Laplace inverse of f of s by s, so I saw that it is nothing but it was e to t integral Laplace inverse of f of s. So Laplace inverse of f of s means f of t. So you can see that 2 upon s square plus 4 Laplace inverse will be nothing but sine 2t because it is the value of sine 2t. So I have substituted the value of the function. So I get that it is my one minus of integral zero to t sine two t dt. Now I have to just evaluate the value of the integral for sine two t. So it is minus cos two t by two. So I have substituted the value. Now I shall evaluate it for putting the limits. So it, I get the value as one plus cos two t by two, which is equal to cos square t. So this is my answer. So in this way, you are able to solve the Laplace inverse where it was of the type of f of s by s. So just you have to just judge what is f of s and which formula you have to apply. So let us calculate the Laplace inverse for the first shifting property. So we all know that the Laplace of e to power at f of t is f of s minus of a. So when you take this Laplace to the other side, it becomes Laplace inverse of f of s minus of a e to power at f of t. So if we are taking it for the negative exponent, we can say that it is Laplace inverse of f of s plus a, which is e to power at f of t and e to power minus at f of t. And for f of t, we will write as Laplace inverse of f of s. So you can see here that if there is a term of f of s plus a, then what we do that whatever is a, we have it in the exponent term. So it is e to power minus a t. If it is a plus a, it will become minus a t. And we have to calculate the Laplace inverse of f of s. Let's consider a problem of the first shifting property. So we have Laplace inverse of s upon s square plus 6s plus 25. So we have in the denominator a quadratic equation that is s square plus 6s plus 25 and we shall try to uh, solve it or we shall make it a whole square. So s square plus 6s plus 25 can be written as s square plus 6s plus 9 plus 16 and s square plus 6s plus 9 is nothing but s plus 3 ka whole square and 16 can be written as 4 ka whole square. So you can see that the s has been shifted and s here is s plus 3 ka whole square. So in the numerator also, we are having one s. So what we do, we try to uh, similarize with the denominator and we have added and subtracted the three. So we have s plus three minus three. And now we shall again break up into two terms. So we have s plus three upon s plus three ka whole square plus four square. And we have taken minus three constant and outside Laplace inverse of one upon s plus three ka whole square plus four square. So for one term, we have re replaced one by four by four because here we have four square so that we can uh, equate it to the sign term. So now I want only the numerator four in my bracket. So I take out the denominator four outside the Laplace inverse. So now you can see that here the shifting theorem for shifting theorem has been applied because it is f of s plus a. So if it is s plus a, you get an exponential with a negative sign, you get e to the power minus 3t. And this is all the cost term. So it is trigonometry cos of 4t. And here it is for the shifting theorem has been applied for the sign term. 
So it is minus 3 by 4 e to the power minus 3t sine of 4t. So in this way, you can uh, have a feel that how to apply the Laplace inverse applying the first shifting theorem. So let us evolve the Laplace inverse transform using the second shifting property. So in the second shifting property, you have already seen that the second shifting property was involved with the unit step functions. So when you had applied the Laplace transform on ft minus a, ut minus a, you had the result e to the power minus as of f of s. So the same second shifting property for the Laplace inverse is evolved from this relation as well. So we are taking the Laplace to the right hand side. So we get Laplace inverse of e to the power minus as of f of s will be nothing but the question itself that is f of t minus a ut minus a. So if you have the equation of the type where the function and there is a unit step function in the same uh, argument that is t minus a. So the argument that is the where it has been shifted with a it carries in the exponential term with e to the power minus a s and you have multiplied with f of s so you can calculate the Laplace inverse. So it is Laplace inverse of e to the power minus a s f of s is f of t minus a u t minus of a. So let us discuss a problem related to the second shifting property. So let us consider a question of uh, the second shifting theorem. So Laplace inverse of e to the power minus pi by 2s plus e to the power minus 3 pi by 2s upon s squared plus 1. So we have divided the equation into two parts. So we have e to the power minus pi by 2s into s squared plus 1 plus e to the power minus of 3 pi by 2 s by 2. So now you can see here if we compare it with this equation, so we have the terms with e to the power minus a s, where a is for the first term it is pi by 2 and for the second term it is 3 pi by 2. So we can apply the formula of the second shifting theorem. So it is e to the power minus a s into f of s type. So it can be written as f of t minus a. So for the first term, the a is pi by 2 here. So what we do, and we know that this is our f of s, which is 1 upon s square plus 1. And the function for this is, if we calculate the Laplace inverse of 1 upon s square plus 1, so it will be for the sine term. So the function is sine t. So what we have to do, we have to replace our function f of t by f of t minus a. So our t has to be replaced by t minus of a. For the first part, our a is pi by 2. So we have replaced a with pi by 2 with the first function in the first term. So we get sine of t minus of pi by 2 into u t minus of pi by 2. And in the second term, the a is 3 pi by 2. But the function remains the same because we have to evaluate the Laplace inverse of 1 upon s square plus 1. So the function is sine t. Now t has to be replaced by t minus a. So we get here as sine t minus of 3 pi by 2 into u of t minus of 3 pi by 2. So we have this answer for the Laplace inverse. And we could have left it here also. If you could solve it, you can proceed further. Now sine of t minus pi by 2, that is if you want to interchange type sine of t minus theta. So we have taken pi by 2 minus t here. So it becomes minus of sine of pi by 2 minus t into u t minus pi by 2. And similarly, again, we have interchanged the argument. So we get again minus of sine of 3 by 3 pi by 2 minus t into u t minus of 3 pi by 2. So we know that sine of pi by 2 minus theta is my cos of theta because in the first quadrant sine remains positive. So it is minus cos t u t minus of pi by 2. And in this, there it is third quadrant. So here the sign changes to cos and there is a negative sign also. So you get as cos of t. So cos t is taken outside common. So you get a term in the bracket that is u t minus of 3 pi by 2 minus of u t minus of pi by 2. So what you have to do here, you have to just see, you have to see that it is a term of e to the power minus a s into f of s. Once you have judged what is your f of s, you have to judge the function means you have to take the inverse Laplace transform of the f of s. 
So it is f of t, f of t is what? f of t is now your sine t function. But instead of writing it for sine t, you have to write it as f of t minus a. So you have to replace your t by t minus a. For the first term, you have replaced the t by t minus pi by 2. And for the second, you have replaced your t by t minus of 3 pi by 2. So this is the only step that you have to remember when you want to apply the second shifting theorem.